Hello class, now that you have reviewed the hypothesis testing presentation, you are ready to move on to some practicing of those skills, of, those, of that knowledge um, in, in Excel. So this assignment comes from REM 411, which is eco Ecological Monitoring and Analysis. And just a note that the material that's covered in this lesson is going to not kind of not cover some of the basic material that we've covered in 5.1 and 5.2. Um, things like moving columns, um, copy and pasting, that kind of thing. So if you have questions about that, then you can refer back to those other exercises, or you can ask me. So we're going to first generate some descriptive statistics for our species. We have these three species here, and we want to know um, information about them that makes them different. So we're going to open our spreadsheet. Hopefully you have that open, and you're going to save it with your last name because that's going to be the thing that you turn in and we have our leaf length here and our leaf width here and these were collected for 10 randomly chosen leaves on three individuals um, this was done for three different species and note that the units of measurement are in millimeters and are included in the column headers to assure that all units are constant, consistent. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the leaf surface area to volume ratio in millimeters squared. So label column D area in millimeters squared. And press enter. And to calculate a value here we're going to press equals and click B2 times C2, enter, length times width, right? And we're going to repeat this for each of the rows, and so I'm just going to put it so I have my black um, cross here, and I'm double click, and it goes all the way down to the bottom of my data set. You can also drag from that corner and bring it all the way down. So what we would like to do now is generate our descriptive statistics. So from the main menu here, I'm going to go to options, and this may look a little bit different in um, older versions, but um, so it might say Excel options, and here it says options, and I'm going to go to add-ins. Now. I've already added my analysis tool pack, but yours will be under inactive applications. So you're going to click analysis tool, tool pack and click go. And make sure that this box here on analysis tool pack is checked. Click OK. Then when you go to your data tab, you will see this data analysis section. So from here, I would like you to click Data Analysis, and this gives us all the different options in data analysis. What we're going to do first is Descriptive Statistics. So select Descriptive Statistics and click OK. And for the input range, we want to know what's going on in the area for Species 1. So I'm going to highlight from here down, species 1, and for the output range I'm going to specify H2, press enter. I'm also going to check the box here for summary statistics, and then I'm going to click OK. For the input range, we're going to be selecting our length, width, and area for species 1. We're going to go down to species 1 here and expand this out again. And in this case, the labels are in the first row. And I would like this information, once it's calculated, to go in H2. 
I also want to make sure that summary statistics is checked. When that's done, I'm going to click OK. You should now see a table containing a variety of calculations um, and do this for all three species. For species 2, put the table in row 32 and for species 3, put it in row 62 and this will help you keep the data organized. These terms are terms that you will eventually become familiar with as you take statistics, statistics classes, but just know that they are each meaningful in their own way and tell us inf information about the data that we selected. So I'm going to move forward here with my species 2, do data analysis, descriptive statistics, and select my input range. Species 2. And select my, oh, so there's no labels this time. So I'm going to select my output location. And I want it to be H32. And OK. And I'll do the same thing with species 3. OK. Select my input range down here, these three columns, make sure that I have them all. And my output range is going to be H62. Okay, so here are my three sets of descriptive statistics for each of my species. So next we're going to go into graphing the frequency histogram of leaf surface area. And a frequency histogram is a bar graph um, in, in Excel. It's called a column graph uh, with the variables of interest divided into a series of equal intervals on the x-axis, which is the bottom, and the frequency or percent of observations on the y-axis, which is on the left side. So you've got it shows which numbers have a lot of um, repeats, so it, it shows you where most of the data lies. And a frequency histogram allows you to visualize the distribution of the data and is an extremely useful tool in the initial stages of data analysis. Um, viewing a histogram of your data is the first step to understand what the data means. So first we're going to create our distance categories. And the goal here is to create about 15 discrete intervals or categories that are called bins. Uh, the bins are equally spaced and cover the range of values for all three species. Now, if this is a little bit confusing right now, that's fine. Um, this is something that we'll just, you'll, you'll be able to visualize it in just a couple steps here. And in column E, I'm going to type distance. interval. Column F is going to be left blank for now. In E2, I'm going to type 200 because the distance interval for 200 captures from 0 to 200. And in E3, I'm going to type 400 because this is showing that I want a space of 200 between my intervals. Now, I'm going to drag this, highlight, highlight both 200 and 400 and drag it down. And you can see that on the right you, there's the numbers that um, it would be if you landed there. So I want to go to 3600. And I go to 3600 because the highest value in all of column D is a little bit below 3600. So um, this interval covers all of the values in our area. So using this information, we're going to create a frequency histogram. So again, from the Data tab, choose Data Analysis. This time, choose Histogram, and click OK. And for our input range, we're going to select all the values in area 
including the title. This becomes important later. So highlight that, including the title. And then for our bin range, we want to specify our bin ranges, again, with the title. Drop down, and I'm going to check this box to say that I've included the labels. And for the output range, I want the output to be put, this, again, this is organization, I want it to be put in P2. Expand this out again and make sure that the box for chart option, chart output is checked since we want to like to see it as a chart. And click OK. Now let's scroll over and here we have our histogram. Now this doesn't look like your normal bell curve histogram. You can see that for species one there are a lot more values that have lower numbers, so lower, um, lower areas than what we would assume the other species have, but we'll find that out for sure in a second. So we're going to do the same thing with our other species and we're going to create a side-by-side -side frequency histogram for two or more variables. So again, we're going to open the histogram dialog box. Um, select histogram, click OK. This time our input range is going to be species 2, but without a title. So we're going to highlight the area values for species 2. Make this bigger. And our bin range even though our bin range isn't changing, we're going to highlight this without the title. And uncheck this box for labels. And we would like our output to go in P32. And click OK. So now I have my chart and I'm going to drag this down just so I make sure I don't lose it. So the distribution of this species is quite a bit different. So it's more spread out and it has higher values and not quite as low values as our first, the distribution of our first species. And so we're going to do the same thing for species three. So I'm going to select histogram. Okay. Input values are going to be species three. Drag these down. The bin will be the same because I've already excluded the labels, but my output location will be P62. And I've got a chart, so I'm going to click OK. And again, I'm going to go up here and find my histogram and make sure that I don't mix it up with something else. All right. Now, we'd like to compile these so that we can see them all together, because having them in three separate tables, it's hard to compare them. So I'm going to right-click on the Species 1 histogram and choose Select Data. From the menu that appears, um, in the Select Data Source window, I'm going to click on Frequency and click Edit. And I'm going to rename this Species 1. And I'm going to rename this Species 1. Click OK. And then I'm going to add. And in the series name, I'm going to call it Species 2. And for series values, I'm going to highlight the Species 2 frequencies. I'm going to go down to Species 2 right here. There's this column for frequencies, and I'm not going to include the label. And highlight. And then expand out. Click OK. Let's take a peek. It hasn't shown up yet. 
then I'm going to do the same thing for species 3. Label this species 3 and select the distribution the frequency in species 3. And click OK. And OK here as well. And up we go to the top to see what we've created. So now you can see all three species on the same graph so you can really compare what kind of distribution they have and which species are different than the other species. I'm sure you would agree that looking at a bar graph like this is a lot more informative about our species values than looking at just random numbers. So our last step in this lesson is to do some statistical tests. So like we talked about in the presentation, there are ways that we can statistically test how different these different species are in terms of leaf size. The first thing we need to do is we need to rearrange the data. So we need to label a new tab and call it statistics. So I'm going to double click down here, statistics. And I'm going to copy and paste the species and area columns into the new spreadsheet. So on leaf size, go over here, and I'm going to press select A and hold my control button down and select D and control C. Then I'm going to move on to my statistics tab and paste. I'm going to label column B species 1 area You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Column 2 is going to be species 2 area millimeter squared. And column 3 is going to be species 3 area millimeters squared. Now these ones are not wrapping so they haven't copied the formatting so I'm going to just highlight this row and I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to wrap the text so I can see my values better. So once you have created labels for species 1 we can copy and paste into the other cells and change the number instead of typing, but you can type as well. So now we're going to move the data into the respective columns so that it looks similar to the example that's shown in your handout. Um, so this column here is just to help me know which values go where. Um, so species 1 is already in place, so I'm going to highlight all the values, area values for species 2. and copy. Actually I'm gonna I'm gonna cut. So control X and control V. That way I don't get repeated information. Go down here to species three and control X for cut. and control V. Now I no longer need my species column here because I have all that information so I'm going to delete that. Now that we have our data organized by um, species and laid out this way we're, we're going to perform some statistical tests and the first one we're going to do is t-tests and like I talked about in the presentation these statistical tests are going to be what help us determine how different each of these species are from one another. 
Um, a t-test is used when you have only two variables, and uh, which the variables are the things that you're comparing. So from the data tab, we're going to choose data analysis, and in the analysis box, choose <clears throat> t-test two two sample assuming equal variance and we're not going to get into the details of what that means yet. So we're going to select our variable one range and that's going to be the numeric values for species one not including the labels and our variable range two is going to be the numeric values for species two again not including the labels. Oops that one again. The hypothesized mean difference is um, zero is its default, so we'll leave that the way it is. Um, since we're not including labels, I don't have this box checked. And the alpha is 0 0.05, which is as, as we discussed in the presentation, is what, we, what our goal is for um, accuracy. And our output range, I would like this table to go to E2. And click OK. So that we remember what this table was created from, we're going to relabel it or specify its labeling. This is for species 1 and 2. The value that we're most interested in here is, let's expand this, we're most interested in the um, this cell here with the two-tailed t-test and the number is so small that it actually has 10 places to the uh, left of the decimal place. So it's a very small number which definitely means that it's less than 0.05. Um, and so instead of denoting all the zeros, when we're referring to what the p-value is, we would simply refer to p is less than 0 0.001. So we're going to do the same thing for species 2 and 3, and we're going to see if species 2 and 3 are different at all. So I'm going to go to data analysis, assuming equal variance. My input range this time is going to be species 2. And variable for 2 is going to be species 3. Leave that 0, no labels, alpha is 0 .5, 0.05, and my output range this time is going to be, I'm actually going to put it in I I2 and press OK. Now I will label this one species 2 and 3 and expand this out a little bit so I can see it. Now notice here on the on the p-value it's 0.69 and our cutoff is 0 0.05 so this um, according to our test here, species 2 and 3 are not very different. And if we look at our histogram, this isn't very surprising. So species 1 and species 2 do look very different in our histogram, but species 2 and species 3 look very similar. And just for good measure, we're going to do this again with species 1 and species 3, just to see how different the p-value will be. So data analysis, two sample, and we're going to select species one information. And for variable two, we're going to select species three information. And our output range is going to go in <clears throat> M2 
and click OK. So again, we have a significant difference between species 3 and species 1. We're going to now do one last test, and this is called an ANOVA, um, which means an analysis of variance. And this one's used when you have more than two variables, which we do have. And since we have three species, um, this is what is needed to compare them all at the same time. So from the data analysis toolbox again, choose ANOVA single factor up here. Okay. And we are going to highlight all three columns, including the headers, for your input range. Make sure that we specify that the label is in the first row. And for output range, click this radio button here and I'm going to select E18 and select OK. So as we look our, at our analysis of variance, there's um, many different numbers that will become more pertinent to you in the future, um, but one is we've got this p-value and it looks really good. Um, we, it looks like we're showing a lot of difference between our species, but as we can, as we've kind of figured out from our, our um, our t-test is that there is a difference between species 1 and species and between 2 and 3. So although we have a good p-value here, nice and low, um, we know a little bit more um, since we've done this analysis with our individual samples. Now that we've done our analysis, we can determine whether we accept or reject our hypothesis. Now let's go to our representation and review what our null and alternative hypotheses were. So our null hypothesis is that there's no difference in the leaf area of the different species. So if we're looking at our differences, we can say that that is true for species 2 and 3. For species 2 and 3, there's not a significant difference in the leaf surface area. So we failed to reject our null hypothesis for species 2 and 3, meaning that we didn't disprove it. Our alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in the leaf area of the different species. And that is the case for uh, between species 1 and 2 and between species 1 and 3. So um, for those two cases, we have accepted our alternative hypothesis and we have rejected our null hypothesis. So now we, now we know that there is a difference between 1 and 2 and 1 and 3 and not a difference between species 2 and 3. Please now complete the quiz, um, making sure to have um, the presentation notes available to you and um, also the uh, making sure that you have completed this exercise and, and have the same results that I've gotten here. Thank you and please let me know if you have any questions.